Hello, today let's talk about how to make mine version of the EV SSGI node group, EV Global Elimination. So just to make clear, this video is made at August 17, 2020. Uh, this video was uploaded to Bilibli, the Chinese YouTube, and uh, this was before the SSGI add-on was published. Uh, and my node group is based on uh, 0451's initial uh, node group version. But uh, we are kind of different. We are the same in the core and we're the same in the overall structure, but uh, we have some different node group, uh, no, diff different nodes setups, and uh, the end result is a bit different. I would argue that my node group does a better job, ex especially when it comes to uh, subsurface scattering. Uh, but our node groups are kind of different. Uh, because we have we have made different decisions, we have made different sacrifices. We decide to save different proportion of the of the effect, and we decide uh, decide to sacrifice certain certain aspects. Uh, but but we uh, we make different decisions, and that's why we are different. Yeah, and, and that's just to make clear. And uh, if you speak Chinese, please come to my Billy Billy website and just subscribe to my Billy Billy account. I have about. Uh, I have about 1,000 subscribers, it's about to be 2,000, uh, waiting for you to join. So uh, this video is mainly going to be me dubbing over the original Chinese video. Uh, I just want to make an English version of it. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. So what's on the screen is like, um, the first 10 minutes or so is just going to be me talking, so if you don't want to hear my... Uh, my useless talking, you can just skip to this timestamp, but the timestamp is going to be different because I just add an intro, an English intro on top of it, so I posted another timestamp on the screen. So, uh, this note group is based on this, uh, this thing right here, so if you want to look at the original note group that I was based on, just look at that. So, uh, this is, was his original post in blendartist.com, and this is uh, his original like showcase of the note group. Of course, yes, made an add-on after afterwards. So yeah, and this is my version of the note group. So just wanting to know uh, if you turn off the the screen space, the screen space reflection, the uh, global illumination is gone. If you turn it up, it's coming back on. This uh, effect is kind of good. Uh, so if you move the sun a bit, you can see it, it's actually changing. It's actually changing. You can make sure that it's not uh, baked. And there's a, a, a slightly a more complicated scene. Uh, this scene is the classroom scene. This this scene was also being used by the uh, by the add-on to uh, as a demonstration. So uh, I, I think it, it will be just cool to do it also. But uh, if, uh, just for the convenience, uh, I just want to turn off some of the lights to make it more obvious. Uh, for example, the ceiling lights uh, and the uh, outside lights, probably the blackboard lights. Just save the sun right there. Uh, let's just uh, showcase of the of the no global emission effect. Right now, let's turn up, turn the GI on. Let's move the sun a bit. You can see uh, the effect is kind of good. So yeah, it's kind of good. Yeah, just like that. So let's. Let's, uh, let's spend some time to talk about its shortcomings, its uh, pros and cons and stuff. So because it, there, there's a lot of shortcomings, so if you don't like it, you can just uh, skip to this timestamp, but the timestamp is going to be different, so anyway. So the first of all is going to be screen space. So what do you mean screen space? For example, if I move away the camera, uh, you can see it's totally black, nothing coming up. So uh, why does it happen? Because we need this uh, bright spot to be on the screen. This bright spot. This bright spot can be the the sun, uh, the sun on the uh, the sunlight on the floor. It can also be uh, the it can also be the emission emission uh, the emission shaders. For example, if I do this uh, in the principal APSF, you can actually see that it's emitting lights. But the bright spot needs to be on the screen. So that's the shortcomings. The bright spot needs to be on the screen. Otherwise, there's no effect whatsoever. So there's a limitation right there. So the second one is that there's a lot of noise. Uh, but uh, what's lucky is that this thing is capable of using the denoise node that we have. It's kind of clean, so we can do that. And the third one is that it renders kind of slower than a usual EV. You can see uh, the node grows kind of complex, so 
It is a little bit slower. You can just think of it. Do you need all the、uh, shaders to become、uh, to be replaced by this one, or you just replace some part of it? You can just think of it. And uh, there's um, uh, the third one is that the the roughness is kind of affecting the global illumination. So there's a、uh, there's a lot of different stuff. So、uh, this this is my decision. I decide to turn off all the mirror,、uh, all, all the mirror reflections, or the reflections when you're、uh, supposed to be there when when the rough is low.、Uh, I, I I decided to turn it off because、uh, I want to make sure that the global animation is still there、uh, even if the roughness is low. But in the add-ons node group, you can actually see. The global、uh, the global illumination is gone once the roughness gets to the zero. But in my node group, I make a different、uh, decision. I decide to turn off the、uh, turn off the reflections to make sure that the global illuminations are still there、uh, under low light situation. So、uh, you can see in the, on the video, I decide to use the reflection planes and、uh, and baking the the reflections. So that's just a compromise that I made. Just make sure、uh, you you see this this、um, this cup right there has some bounce light on it, but it doesn't reflect the、uh, the checker texture whatsoever. So we need to use、uh, reflection Q map to bake it. That's、uh, the shortcomings of this node group right here. You can see the reflections back on once you bake it.、Uh, and yes,、uh, that's the shortcoming of this node group. <clears throat> There's a limitation right there. I just want to know. Another one,、um, smooth,、uh, smooth metals are not capable of casting any、uh, global illumination.、Uh, this is the same、uh, in the add-on. Just wanted to know. This is,、uh, this is, is it, it is impossible to do this because this. Uh, what what this node group is doing is actually like diffusing up all the screen space reflection. The screen space reflection was supposed to be like mirror, like very clear、uh, mirror reflections, but but this is just diffusing this up, so it's impossible to do that in smooth mirror. And the, another one is that、uh, the subsurface subsurface、uh, effect is not as good as the original、uh, principal BSD. You can see that it's. It's、uh, the original one is much better. So first of all,、uh, the original one looks more,、uh, more, more、uh, translucent. I have I have tried my my best to make them close, but there's nothing I can do. And the most most obvious one is the normals.、Um, you can actually see the original one has a normal smoothing effect,、um, and I cannot reproduce that using node grip because there's no there's not. Uh, this is not a smooth node.、Uh, this is not a smooth node or a, a blur node in the、uh, in, in the shading node. So,、uh, and I I went to see the add-on version of this node group, and what zero four five one has done is basically just turned down the、uh, the normals,、uh, the strength of the normals. I don't know if I、uh, get it wrong or something, but、uh, that's basically what I think he's doing. And you can actually see that、uh, this is not actually what the subsurface scattering is actually doing. It's just smoothing out, it's blurring out the details. It's not、uh, turning down the strength. And then all the tutorials that I found online about how to blur textures are basically like mani man manipulating about the the vectors, like mixing a, a noise texture in the vectors. But this node group is about、uh, is was supposed to replace this principal BSDF. So this this method is no use after all. So the,、uh, and there's another one, another、uh, another shortcomings. The subsurface radius does not work with the node groups. That's an EV limit,、uh, uh, limitation. That's to, that, that's not the node groups' faults. It's EV's limitation. So this input right there, in that、uh, this input is totally useless. Totally useless. There's nothing, nothing affecting it. This、uh, right now,、uh, I'm changing all. The numbers to one. You can actually see that it's still a little, a little reddish. You can see、uh, that it doesn't change to white completely. So it doesn't doesn't do anything. This node group,、uh, this input doesn't do anything. It's it's totally EV limitation. So there's two ways you can choose. The first way is that you either like the first way is that you input all those numbers manually. You disconnect all of those and you 
and you just input all those values manually. That's a little bit troublesome, but it's kind of better than the second one. The second way of, uh, way around is to use drivers. You can just like um, copy new a uh, copy as new driver and uh, get into there. Just paste driver. But uh, there's a problem. If you uh, use this node group in a different material, you will need to change the path of each uh, drivers manually. And uh, the, the same thing you need to do after you append this node group to a different uh, project. So this is a very, very troublesome process. So I would suggest you just input, input the value manually. It's, it's kind of not that troublesome comparing to the, the, comparing, comparing to the second way around. So there's another problem, uh, so the, the black problem, so um, um, I'm not racist, but yeah. Um, this is the uh, base color, if I uh, darken the base color, you can see there's nothing going on, there's no uh, global emission out whatsoever, but that's actually not accurate, because because in cycles, no matter how dark the, uh, the, the base color is, there are always going to be some, uh, some bounce lights going on. Uh, but in EV, uh, for some reason, uh, there's n n no nothing. But uh, so I decide to clamp it. Uh, so there, uh, I make sure that there be some bounce light under dark, uh, dark color situation. But the problem is, uh, the dark color is not dark enough right now. So, so for example, if I do that, we we'll turn the weight, uh, turn turn it all the way to black. You can actually see it's not black enough. So right here, uh, let's compare it to the original uh, principal BSDF. You can see the original one is much darker. So uh, this is the sacrifice that I make. Uh, there's no other way around it, or probably there is, but I just don't know. This is my choice, and uh, pr apparently the uh, the add-on doesn't make this choice. Uh, and so, if you are making any dark, uh, darker base color in the add-on, you're not going to get any uh, bounce lights. And um, that's basically all the shortcomings. Let's just start to make this add-on right now. No, I don't. I mean, uh, let's make this uh, note right now. So, uh, what's on the screen is like, uh, let's make a simple, uh, let's make a simple scene. If you don't want to see it, just skip to this timestamp. Again, it's going to be new timestamp. Let's just make it to be uh, three uh, in the height, and let's shift that, and let's shift Z. Uh, let's just make it larger, and let's inset the face to make a window. Let's delete the face. Uh, let's use. Um, a modifier, a uh, solidify modifier. Let's give it some thickness. Let's uh, check the even thickness. Let's get inside and just get the camera working. Uh, control Alt Zero. Let's just get the camera working. Let's uh, use the fly mode and just let's place our camera to make our uh, our testing more convenient. Let's just change the focal length of the camera. To be about 20, yeah, 20. Let's get closer, uh, place the camera, yeah, that's it. So, um, let's, let's place this light a bit. Let's change it to a sunlight, Alt Shield R, and change the radius to 15. Let's just um, change the position of it and use a uh, damp track and select this cube right there and uh, negative Z. A negative Z uh, and the turn down the string of the world uh, and we have set up the scene so let's start do this. let's start do this so the first step is to enable screen space reflections let's just change the settings a bit let's turn off half uh, rest trace and turn on reflection the refraction is optional if you want to turn on uh, this uh, turn it off and turn it on doesn't matter and turn the uh, trace position to Point, uh, 7, 8, and the max roughness 1, thickness to 0 0.4, the last uh, two just make it 0. Uh, I don't really know why you would need to like 0 0.78 uh, that, uh, that precise, but uh, basically what I think it is is to just uh, just to turn up the screen space reflection strength and resolution, because we are basically uh, diffusing up the, the screen space reflection, so we need it to be very large in strength, I guess. So let's start to do this by switching to uh, shading uh, workspace, and let's just get the roughness to one and uh, select this uh, principal BSDF and Control G. Uh, let's just get the the screen task key here. Control G and just get a node grip right here. 
So uh, let's add another node. What node? Uh, let's add a glossy. Wait, uh, no, no. Let's uh, let's add a, a mix shader. Yeah, mix shader. So we're gonna mix with another node. What node? We're gonna mix with a glossy BSDF. Uh, mix with a glossy BSDF. So let's connect to the first slot. So the the, the uh, so let's uh, connect all the things that we should connect it to. The normal to normal, base color to base color, roughness to roughness. You can actually see that there's some uh, bounce light right there already because this is the core of the node group. This is basically uh, what the node group was supposed to be, like the core, down to the core. Uh, the add-on uses uh, basically the same core, uh, although they, uh, it looks a bit different, but we are the same core. Let's just rename the thing to core the node group. So there is a very important thing right there. Uh, the mix shaders uh, order is very important. You, you see, if I switch the order, uh, there's the bounce light's gone. Uh, so there is a. This is a little bit strange because it's 0.5 in the value, but yeah, this is a uh, EV's limitation. So um, the screen space reflections can only be cast by one of the uh, of the BS BSDF right there. So this cannot be. Uh, probably makes so the order of this input is kind of important. So this is Evie's limitation. So going to know. So yeah. So this is the core of the node group. Let's drag it uh, beside there. So uh, just what like what I said, the screen space radius input is totally useless as it's disconnected. And right now. Let's just uh, fix other problems. This core of the node group is basically it, but we have all the other group, uh, all the other nodes. What are those nodes for? Uh, those nodes are for solving all kinds of problems. Like what? Like um, this problem right here. We can see uh, it's too dark. We need to boost it up. Uh, how do we boost it up? Let's uh, let's do it. Let's do it by uh, boosting up the base color of the glossy. Let's use the hue saturation node. Let's crank up the value right here. So for example, you can uh, make it 4. Let's make it first to compile. And you can actually see uh, that it's it's more bright right now. But there's a problem. If you turn down the roughness, you can actually see the, uh, the screen is actually accumulating brightness. And it uh, eventually, there's a very, 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 very strange effect going on. So we kind of need to fix this problem as well. Uh, I don't know why this problem occurs, uh, this is kind of weird, kind of like a bug, but yeah, we just need to fix this problem. We use mix RGB to mix it uh, with the original uh, color. We, we use roughness as the value, so the uh, logic is that um, uh, the bigger the, va uh, the, the roughness is, uh, the, the more it uses the original, uh, the, the bigger the roughness is, the more it uses the boosted uh, uh, color. The, the smaller the roughness is, it, use, it uses more the smaller uh, value color, if you can understand. So, you're basically using two different uh, values based on the roughness. So you can see uh, the problem is fixed right there. You can actually try to boost it up a bit, let's see the threshold and stuff. Let's see how bright you can get. Uh, let's refresh it a bit. Mm, I don't see the problem. Yeah, it's it's a good job. Uh, it's successful. I turn. Let's uh, adjust the roughness to see. Uh, so this is basically what the add-on does. Uh, uh, I uh, so, but but my decision is that I decide to make this low roughness situation to have some bounce line. Because you see here, it doesn't have any bounce at all. So what I decided to do is like, uh, and also um, uh, right now uh, the the outlook of the uh, other things that have low roughness actually looks kind of like metal. So we kind of need to fix this problem as well. So how do we fix this problem? So let's use a converter clamp. Let's clamp its roughness. The, the, the lowest value, let's clamp it to 0.6 and the highest 0.9. So right now you can see in the low 
a value situ a, a low roughness situation, we can guarantee that there is some uh, bounce light and there's and it doesn't look like metal at all. But uh, the problem is that the, the the glossy reflections are gone. You need to bake it now. So yeah, that's a that's a decision that I make, and the the add-on has make a different decision. So uh, just our just our difference right there. You can actually see the reflections in the in the in the shading in, in the EV shading uh, viewport, but you can you cannot see it under rendered view mode. The material preview mode, you can see the HDRI, but not in the render view mode. You can actually see that um, this global animation is actually diffusing up the glossy uh, screen space reflection, as you can see right there. And that's a sacrifice that I make. So we need to like get a reflection plane and stuff, and just get it up, just place it a bit. We need to do that to get some reflections. Right now, you can see that the reflections there. Uh, that's the only thing you can do. You, you need to get this on every win uh, on every wall that you have. It's a bit troublesome, but yeah, that's the sacrifice that I make. And there's a more. There are more problems. There are more problems. Uh, now right now we have uh, climbed the roughness, so the problem is that the met metals don't work anymore. You can see the metals are not really working even though we get the metallic to one. Um, so there's no such a difference. Uh, I guess it's it's a it's a darker in color it's it's darker in color but it's not really being being met uh, metallic. So let's so let's start, let's solve this problem. So, so let's uh, let's get a new mix color, mix RGB. And let's uh, connect the metallic to the vector. So this logic is like that: the higher uh, the higher the metallic is, it uses more the the original uh, roughness. The lower the metallic is, it uses more the clamped uh, the clamped uh, the clamped roughness. So right now, let's see. The metal's back. The metal's back. But there's another problem. Uh, the, the, the other problem that we have solved is uh, has come back, so we kind of need to do uh, another mix again. Let's mix another RGB. Connect the uh, original uh, base color. Let's get the metallic to the factor. Uh, the, the bigger the metallic is, you use more the original base color. The smaller it is, you use more the, uh, the boosted uh, base color. But the shortcoming is that uh, the smooth metals don't have any uh, downside. Just that you know. Uh, this is a sacrifice. So the metal head problem has been solved, but there's another problem, the subsurface scattering problem. So if you turn up the uh, subsurface scattering right now, let's uh, check the subsurface uh, translucent. Let's ju let's just compare it to the original principal BSDF. You can actually see that the the original one is much better than mine uh, than the note group. So that's a problem. My nerve group is slightly worse than the original one. And we need to fix this problem. And uh, just for the sake of convenience, let's make a new monkey. Uh, let's make a new Suzanne head right here. Let's just drag it here. Just for sake of convenience, uh, it's more convenient to have a monkey right here. To um, preview the uh, the, the subsurface scattering, just check the auto smooth and uh, sub subdivide it a bit and get the same material and uh, make it a single user. Let's crank up the subsurface. And let's let's see the original one and minor grip. 
a uh, uh, big difference. Let's just fix it. Uh, before we do that, let's just organize it a bit. So first, this one, these two. The, these two is for these two are for. Let's control J. We'll make a frame. Let's rename it. Uh, this one is for clamping the glossy miraculous. And it's metallic dependent. And uh, th this frame is for um, just in case you forget what these notes are for. Let's cancel J. Uh, let's rename this to uh, uh, boost. Let's boost up the brightness. Uh, it's also roughness and metallic dependent. Okay. Okay, so let's start to uh, fix our uh, subsurface scattering problem. So let's just mix the glossy with another node. What node? Let's mix it with a subsurface scattering node. Of course, because we are fixing the subsurface scattering problem. Let's mix it. And uh, let's just connect all the values that we need to connect. So the the subsurface, sub subsurface color to the color. Let's just turn up the, the texture blur, although it doesn't really do anything. Connect the normals to it, and yeah, that's it. And let's see. Um, so right now we need we need a, a mixed logic. Let's just connect. Uh, let's connect our subsurface value. Uh, connect subsurface value to the vector. Uh, I connected to the wrong slot. Uh, it should have been the the, uh, the the upper one. So the the uh, so basically it's like that. The higher the subsurface value is, the more we use the subsurface node. The lower it is, we the more we use the glossy node. But there's a problem. So uh, if you if you look at it, uh, so right now if we, uh, if the value is one, we're gonna use subsurface uh, the subsurface node completely, and there's no bounce light whatsoever. We don't want that, so we need to clamp it. Let's clamp it. Uh, so the highest value can be 0.8. So it doesn't completely use the subsurface node. You can still see some of the bounce light right there. So this is not belong. This does not belong to the core of the node group. Let's just alt B. Let's just separate it. Let's drag this two node down there. And yeah, that's our node. Let's just uh, select the light and the Suzanne. Let's just hit uh, the slash to get a local view. Uh, it's more convenient. Let's compare the original and my node group. You can see the original is still better. Let's just do some more things. So let's make this scale to 2 or 1.5. You can see it looks, looks more translucent. And the one more thing we can do, uh, we can, uh, for example, we can change the color to red. And let's see. Uh, the original one is still much saturated than ours. Let's just fix that. Uh, so let's let's add a math node in the subsurface input right there. And let's change the mode to multiply. And multiply the value of point, uh, 1.4. And you can see uh, the you can see the saturation is about to match. Let's turn up the roughness right there. You can see the the saturation is kind of match, but the uh, the degree of translucency is still not matching. So let's fix that. So let's add. Uh, a uh, hue saturation node to the uh, to the subsurface color. And let's change the value to two. 
Let's wait for it to compile. You can see uh, it looks more um, looks more translucent. We can add one more uh, hue saturation to the principle as well. And this time we're going to cut it in half. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, it still looks a bit different, but uh, I've tried my best. Uh, I've tried my best. This is already much better than the the add-on version. If you compare, if, if anyone installed the add-on version, it's much already much better. Uh, you can see there's uh, some problem right there using this color. Uh, so compared to the original, yeah, this is there's some problem. Let's just fix that. Uh, crank crank down the the saturation a bit. Yeah, like that. And now the problem is fixed. Yeah, this is already much better than the add-on version uh, in uh, the the SS the. Uh, the subsurface scattering effect. Mm, yeah, it's uh, it, there's still some difference, but I uh, try my best. Mm, we can probably tweak that, or I don't know. Mm. Yeah, there is still some difference, but yeah. Probably brighter. I don't know. Let's let's just tweak it a bit. Mm. Yeah, that, that's it. That's the subsurface part. Uh, there's still some problems, but it's still much better than the add-on. Uh, but the the normal smoothing again is is not. Uh, capable of doing it because we need to need to blur the textures, but there's not a blur node in the shading nodes. So yeah. Okay. Let's uh, press the slash again. Let's uh, exit the logo view. Let's compare it. Uh, it looks a bit brighter because uh, uh, because of the bounce light. If you turn it off, you can see they are kind of the same. They're kind of the same. So yeah. So let's see what's following. Uh, let's just frame this thing a bit. Uh, con let's control J and just rename the frame to um, adjusting the subsurface. Uh, another problem is the. Um, for example. Let's just turn the value to, uh, let's turn the light to black, the base color to black. You can see there's no bounce light whatsoever, and we don't want that. Uh, this is my choice. Uh, the add-on doesn't do it, so just want you to know. So let's just shift, uh, shift and right-click. Yeah, that, that was my, my mouse having some problems. Shift, right-click and, and get that to be a single line. Let's get a separate HSV and connect it to the base color right there. Let's use a combined HSV. Let's connect the H and S. And as for the V, let's clamp the V. Let's clamp the value. Uh, the bright, the brightest one you can as big as you can, so it doesn't matter. The problem is the smallest one, uh, probably 0.25. So the brightness of the color uh, cannot be lower than 0.25. So right now, even if the color is uh, the color is black, you can still see a bit of the bounce light. You can see there is still some a bit uh, some bounce light there. But uh, there's a sacrifice. The sacrifice is that the the black color is not black enough. The black color the black color is, is now uh, gray. So that's a sacrifice that I make. Uh, the add-on doesn't do it, uh, so it's optional. Just let you know. So let's see what's next. So the biggest problems have been solved, and uh, but there's still something that needs to be done. Uh, let's just Control J, frame this, and rename it. 
Uh, this thing is for fixing the low brightness, no bounce light problem. Alright. So, so uh, right now there's still some problems. For example, this, if you turn down the the alpha, if you turn down the alpha. Um, uh, we need to change it to alpha hash. Alpha hash. And you can see it's actually not doing a proper job. So that's because, well, we have mixed some of the nodes right here and only the principal BSDF right there has an alpha. So we kind of need to do something right there. Let's just mix. So let's just use a mix uh, shader in the end. Let's mix it with... Uh, so let's mix it with another node. Uh, so the vector we use the alpha as a vector. So the smaller the alpha is, the more we use uh, the the transparent mix. The bigger the alpha is, we use more of the of the other sub uh, SSGI nodes. So let's get a uh, let's get a transparent node right there. Connect to the first slot. So the smaller the alpha is, the more it uses this transparent node. Let's just frame it, rename it to alpha. And that's it. And there's are still something. Uh, for example, the, uh, the transmission. Let's just try it right now, uh, the alpha. The alpha is doing a uh, good job. So. Uh, we need, still need to do the transmission in the middle, so let's mix. Let's mix it. So uh, let's connect the transmission to the vector. Uh, connect the transmission to the vector. All right. And um, right here, I really wanted to use the glass BSDF, but uh, there are a lot of input. A lot of input that the principal BSDF has that the, the glass doesn't have. The, so I think it might be better to just use the principal BSDF to just copy it. Connect the base color. Um, something like uh, the specular, the roughness. Yeah, a couple of the specular tint as well. Um, let's see. Sheen, I don't know if uh, the glass material in EV has the sheen, but let's just do it. Uh, clear code, we have clear code and clear code roughness. And aura, I, I, I of course. Transmission, let's just keep the transmission to be one. And the transmission roughness, mm, the normal, the clear code normal. Oops, clear code normal. And the tangent, I don't know what the tangent is for, but let, let's just connect it. Let's drag it to here. Let's connect it. Connect it to the second slot. So the bigger the transmission value is, the more you use this. Uh, uh, the more you use this uh, glass material. So let's try it. Uh, we need to check the screen space reflection. Uh, refraction. Let's change the refraction uh, distance to 1. You can see there's some uh, refraction thing right here. Um, let's turn down the roughness. Yeah, you can see the glass material is here. Yeah. Uh, it's just the glass material. Turn it back. So let's just uh, frame this. Let's just frame this. Control J, rename it to transmission. Uh, let's just move this, move this there, uh, because we still still need to get something more in the middle. Emission. We need to mix emission. So we uh, get a new mix shader. And let's just, uh, there's, uh, this is more complicated, a little bit more complicated uh, for the emission. 
because the input is a color, not a value. So let's separate HSV. Um, just for some news, uh, I get the news that uh, two point ninety one is going to get a uh, is going to get a emission strength input very soon, but not now. So let's just use it there. Uh, separate uh, HSV, and let's connect the V to the vector. But the 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 factor cannot be higher than one because it's a mixed shader. So let's clamp it. And the second shader needs to be emission. Oh, where do I put it? Right there. So let's uh, just shift right click on this one. Yeah, my mouse is having problem. Use my uh, touchpad. Right. Connect it to the color. Let's connect it to the second slot. And that's it. Let's see uh, its effect. Let's see how it goes. If I to compile and change the color, let's see. Let's turn off the sunlight for now. You can see it's emitting light right now. The walls are casting some lights. Let's compare it to the original emission. Uh, let's make sure that they have the same strength. Let's uh, get a new RGB node and have a use a saturation for cranking up the value to make it higher than 5. We can turn the value up and let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have any problems. Make sure that it doesn't have any problems. Yeah, was good. And uh, delete it. So, this is all of the node group. Let's just frame it right now. Frame this. Control J and rename. Emission. So, that's all. That's all. That's the node group. That's my version of the node group. This is a bit different than the add on version, but I would argue that my version is uh, has a better effect than his. So, yeah. This is my sub sub. Uh, this is my uh, screen space reflection. Uh, subs, uh, the screen space global animation. Not grip.